so I drove out of Cranbrook last night after supper a little bit, just to rest stop a little further out. Um, wasn't a bad place to sleep. It's pitch black out here though, like, oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, this is what I'm looking at. Not the greatest. 8 hours, 47 minutes, just out to Fernie, and then, yeah, near Left Bridge. It's got a different route here. I might go to Medicine Hat, I will see here. But yeah, 8 hours, 47 minutes, about 5.47, maybe 6 o'clock arrival, so yeah, it's going to be one of those days just to get home, but I had yeah, a nice sleep in the woods. <laughs> Alright, but it is a beautiful morning, so this last stretch of mountains through Fernie here should be pretty beautiful. This part in the night last night, I was gonna drive a little closer to Fernie, but uh, I couldn't see the mountains, couldn't see anything. So, yeah, <laughs> so it's pretty nice to drive through now. Yeah, here come some clouds. <laughs> well, it was beautiful and sunny. Um, I guess we're down near the river in the valley more here with the steep mountains that have just disappeared. So we'll see. Still really pretty with the fog and clouds. It's just so pretty with the fall colors. Sunday morning drive, right? It's kind of hard to see some of the mountains, but you just catch a glimpse of them every once in a while. Oh, perfect timing for this drive. I'm glad I slept in a little bit. <laughs> I guess what do we got? It's just after 9. I was really hoping to be on the road closer to 7.38, but this is perfect. out of kind of the valley and then the fog clouds I guess more fog <laughs> just disappeared this is the one place I haven't spent that much time with Fernie I've always just passed through it real quick um, I know it's pretty popular and obviously tons of things to do here with the ski resort but yeah I'll have to spend some time over here Well, the one thing that I don't have, or the issue I don't have, is with this JDM vehicle, I can easily scooch across. Um, other JDM vehicles I've had, drive throughs were extremely difficult because I had a center console. So, at least here, I can put my foot through and scooch across. Uh, well, just like that, we're out of Fernie. And I think that's one of the last few mountains here that stick up so high. Well, one disadvantage of driving through Fernie, it's not like, uh, say, Jasper or the Canmore Banff area. There's a lot more mountains. Because, yeah, I believe it gets a little flatter here on out. Yeah, this couldn't get any more beautiful. And yeah, I guess we still got a little more mountain range ahead of us, so I'm looking forward to those scenic views.
Alright, so this is Sparwood apparently. <laughs> Another little town. Alright, well my bad. I thought I did the Crow's Nest Pass, I guess, prior to Cranbrook there was a tall mountain pass. Apparently, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> Alright, well, let's do it. Basically, I just filled up and I'm gonna try to get all the way to Saskatoon. So I'll be rolling in on empty probably. Okay, so yeah, I just filled up outside of Fernie on the Crow's Nest Pass. Um, and I have 767k. Um, so I'm gonna try to do it all in one full tank of gas. Now, it is a 60 liter tank. It's empty at about 50 liters, so we'll see. I think I should be able to just make it. All right, this is the one place I always remember and find so interesting. You can uh, see the face of that mountain. It looks like everything slid down it, because it did. <laughs> this is called uh, Frank's Slide. I mean, it was a historic event that happened. Uh, forget when. I think it was the early 1900s. I should probably stop and check again. But I always remember this place because all this mountain fell down and you look ahead and it's all just kind of laying here still. Um, so yeah, there's a whole interpretive center and like history. And, like there's still just like random boulders. And the train tracks <coughs> go through you know, this giant pile of boulders. And it's on even the other side of the highway. Like, look at that one big piece there. And I forget, like, there's the sign right there. So many people died because there were uh, buildings and structures and people sleeping because I guess it happened in the night. But could you imagine all this rock just crazy. Yeah. Alright, well, I guess it's safe to say that things are starting to look a little less mountainous. <laughs> so yeah, we're the edge of the Rocky Mountains here, so time to just get across the prairies. <laughs> well, yeah, it's definitely kind of nice to be back on flatter ground. <laughs> I mean, born on the prairies, it's like you 
get used to seeing long distances, seeing a lot more sky, then you do kind of miss it. That is always true. So yeah, I will always be uh, from the prairies. Alright, I think it's safe to say a goodbye to those mountains. Because that's more south, southwest. I'm pointing the camera now. Beautiful landscape though. Jeez. And then when I point it this way, we got wind turbines and flatter prairies. <laughs> Well, until next time, BC. You were fun like you always are. Uh, I'm glad I get the opportunity to go to BC every summer. Um, yeah, almost thought I wasn't coming to BC this summer, but here we are in the fall, October. October 2nd now. And yeah, it's really cool going through BC in the fall. As I've done a majority of my trips in spring and summer, I guess the next uh, time I, well, for the first time I want to go to BC in the winter. So I will have to plan a winter BC trip one day. Probably won't be this winter, but one day. Alright, just trying a new position. I have a magnetic screw on base and I just stuck. It's uh, straight in front of my speed, so I'm hoping this is a good thing point. You can kind of catch the speed that I'm doing 120 right now, which is more like 113. Speed seems to be reading a bit fast. Hopefully, I can get that fixed with the right size of tires. But yeah, hopefully, that works out good. I'm sure you can see me fairly well. See the sky. Hopefully, I'm not getting too much damage. I guess that would be the but I think it'll be okay. Should be good. It's a nice central spot too. We'll see. Alright. This is Lethbridge. Um, yeah, just basically driving straight through. But yeah, it should be uh, quick, hopefully. I like the highway goes straight through, so. Be in and out in no time. I say uh, in and out in no time. <laughs> I don't just think there's this police up here. But that's the bridge, I guess. I didn't even realize. Left bridge. I don't know, it was a giant, looks probably a railway, railroad <coughs> bridge. <laughs> ah, this won't be fun. Alright, so yeah, just left. Left bridge. <laughs> left, left bridge. Um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. So yeah, now I just got a different camera mount. I have it leaning back more for 360, so you should see any of the stitching lines. Now you should see all the sky and a little bit better. You'll probably see a little bit of the front hood is what I'm hoping. Try this out. The number one. Um, I detoured around the south of Medicine Hat and yeah just crossed the number one and now I'm on this uh, yeah, Highway 41. So yeah <laughs> for me yeah at all costs I avoid like number one all the major highways like that that run through Canada. I always shoot for these secondary highways you know where you can just relax and enjoy the scenery more compared to a fast-paced dual lane highway with full of semis and you know stuff like that um, and then yeah and then you get views like this because you're just out you know off the beaten path like look at this i guess this is part of the medicine hat valley <clears throat> beautiful and we got four hours 22 minutes and yeah about 430k to saskatoon I truly did. 
did miss the, uh, the skies out here. I mean, you get so used to seeing the sky, you know, all the way around you, <laughs> which you just don't get in the mountains. But anyways, three and a half hours, 344k. And yeah, so just like 10 minutes ago, um, I had to do a full brake test from 110 down to like 10 kilometers an hour uh, to, I believe they're caribou. We don't really have caribou around Saskatoon, um, but brown and white with darker horns. Two caribou ran out and I, you know, the one cleared the highway, but the second one, um, yeah, he was right in front of me when I got down to about 10k an hour and full ABS, just squeaking tires, kind of a little squirrel. <laughs> The road was like, the road seemed a little slick, I guess. But anyways, all is good. The brakes work great. <laughs> and at least it's a light little van, so nothing bad happened. But yeah, all right, three and a half hours, just about home. All right, sun is out, it's hot. It's about, I don't know, 20, what do we got? What does the van say? 20 degrees. Feels a little warmer than that, but anyways. Nice prairie partly cloudy day. Alright, so we got two hours remaining. Uh, we're just coming up to Kindersley. Yeah. But yeah, I just spent the last hour on the phone with SGI. A little bit of a process. I had to email them all my uh, import documents. But I was able to get a 28-day insurance, so basically like a month's insurance, which is great because in the past you were only allowed to do uh, eight day permits at the most and I only think they'd allow you to do like two um, So I got like a full month to get everything fixed up and safety um, And the price worked out really good $52 a month, so That should be pretty close to the final monthly payment, but Yeah, and the other cool thing um, of course SGI charges PST on all used cars So no matter what it's like you pay that um, it's six or seven percent now. Can't remember. <laughs> if you pay the PST, remember what? Um, but with this vehicle, luckily, um, it's um, it was only 152 dollars. So yeah, I think he only charged me like six dollars or something. He said. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've paid like previous vehicles like a thousand dollars, or it was like 800, 900 on PST for a used vehicle. So super glad I don't have to pay anything crazy like that. And now all I have to do is just do like the $150 out of province inspection. Which should go perfectly fine. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Just needs a wheel alignment, some new tires. And that'll take care of my kind of crooked steering wheel here a little bit. The alignment's out. And I got a bit of a vibration that uh, happens when you're going a little fast. And then the, yeah, the speedometer's a little fast too. I'm hoping new tires will fix that. But uh, yeah, a couple more hours and I'll be home. Alright, well, just trying to do things to pass the time and I'm just super pumped. I found YouTube videos how to reset the automatic windows because my back windows, for some reason, I couldn't control them from here and the full auto wasn't working. And so what you do is you roll the window down a bit, roll it back up and you hold the switch in the upright position for five seconds. And it reset all the windows. So now I have full control, with full auto on both back windows. But yeah, I couldn't even control the back windows before. So I don't know how to enable whatever feature they did, but also the, the lights were blinking on the back switches. So, they, I don't know, they're just blinking, so I don't know, there must be a safety feature where the driver cannot control the rear windows. But anyways, super excited. I got all the windows working, and it's one click auto up, one click auto down, which is beautiful, right? You can just click both down, you click all four to go down, and then just take your hand off and all four windows will automatically roll all the way down and vice versa once they're all down you just click click and they'll all automatically go all the way up brilliant 
Alright, so I am stoked. Um, we are at a quarter of a tank remaining and we just got over 600k. Um, so yeah, I'm an hour and a half from Saskatoon. So another 150k, I'll easily get another 150k. So I should easily get 800k on this tank, plus the bit of reserve, which is like 7 liters from my calculations. So that means I can get to 900k on the highway, driving normal highway speeds, you know, 110, 115. So if I drop my speed to 100 and keep it at 100, maybe even 95k, I should easily get 1000k on my 60 liter tank. So. That's the whole point of getting this van, was to get that kind of range on regular gasoline. And I think I'm gonna be able to achieve that, which, you know, I'm super excited about. Um, this should work out perfectly if I'm gonna drive to Mexico and pay, you know, like a third of the gas that some other vehicles will be paying, maybe even a quarter. Like if you had a fully built out camper van with a V8, I'm gonna be paying more like less than a third of the gas that that vehicle would be taking. So I'm doing it for less, definitely. All right, we are getting there. One hour, 18 minutes. And uh, yeah, we're just coming up to Rosetown, Saskatchewan. Yeah, already seems like the sun is setting. It's about just a few clouds behind me. And we're at, yeah, 5.07. So yeah, it's been it's been a day. I'm starting to starting to feel it. Don't want to be driving for much longer, but an hour 18 won't be much longer. And I got my friend Monster here to help me with that last little push. <laughs> yeah, the classic stop sign in Rosetown. Definitely. Uh, Good to be home. And yeah, I think I just passed the first sign that has Saskatoon on it, so... <sighs> Can't wait. Saskatoon 107. Needle just dropped a bit, but yeah, I think we're definitely good to go 100k. I know the bottom part of this tank is huge, it has a big reserve, so I ain't worried. And we'll confirm that when I refill it, you know, right at empty again. <laughs> Monster! needle just drops off right at the end obviously to tell you to get to a gas station but yeah I easily got another 100k in this tank so yeah I'm just coming up to yeah 687 688 so yeah I can easily get to 800 well, I mean I could get to 800 and you know have a liter or two left I guess you don't usually run your gas tank with a liter or two of fuel in it either um, but anyways, to have an easy 700 on 50 liters is, yeah, again, perfect. And yeah, we're 45 minutes away. Oh God, <laughs> please hurry up. <laughs> oh yeah, just getting kind of bored. <laughs> but yeah, nice, uh, nice sunset behind us as seen through the side mirror. Starting to get a little paranoid. <laughs> I'm like second guessing myself like it's below empty now right but there should be many liters left in the gas tank 
on. We're so close. We're just coming up to the Vanskoy Potash mine. It's a 26k. Um, I might... Well, I'll just gas up at the next gas station. <laughs> Just to be safe, and we'll double check. I double checked for sure this has a 60 liter tank. I swear I should only be at about 50 liters consumed right now. Maybe just over 50, but we'll know here shortly when I make it to the next gas station. <laughs> Alright, there's the potash mine just out of the city. And there's that magical Saskatoon shines. Sign. <laughs> so magical, right? Took a while to get back here, but looks like we made it. Even if we're rolling in on fumes. <laughs> Alright, just came over the train tracks of the CN. And yeah, there's player more up there. In the area of Saskatoon. But yeah, the SO's right here, so. I'm just going to stop at 741k and then we'll do the math and see how much further I technically could have went. Closed, okay. What the hell? Right. <laughs> of course, I pull back on the highway, and uh, of course, there's a train. As soon as you get to Saskatoon, with all of our trains going diagonally crisscrossing through the city. Alright, I'll put it in neutral, turn it off, and uh, yeah, we'll go to co op, which is basically right behind this train. <laughs> oh, so close, but yet. So far. Alright, where is that co op? Back there. <laughs> Looks like another place where campers and semis sleep for the night. Alright, there it is. 175. Jeez, what did I see? I saw 145 in Alberta. I mean, I guess I could have filled up and taken advantage of that. But, oh well. I just wanted to do this range test. <laughs> Yeah, I guess a little bit too close for comfort. Let's see what that exact mileage was. I guess we only had about five liters left. I mean, still could have done maybe 70, 80 K if needed, but then that's like dry, empty. So what do we use? 56 liters, I guess four liters. 56 liters times 100 divide by our distance of 744. So that's 7.5 liters per 100k of me doing some mountain driving, driving at 110, 120, and you know passing people and not driving economically. So yeah, I am pretty happy with that. So yeah. All right, but we made it. Long story short, pressed the gas mileage. So yeah, we are in Saskatoon. So yeah, next thing to do is to go pick up the dog. I'm sure Kira will be uh, super excited. <laughs> but looks like she had a great time. I had a really good dog sitter take care of her. 
Uh, she basically took her to the dog park beach, played in the river every single day. Um, so yeah, she's been spoiled for these last four days. And yeah, I made a joke saying like, yeah, now she's going to expect going to the, the river and the beach every single day, but <laughs> we'll try to get there as much as we can before winter gets here. Alright, <laughs> we got Kira, and she's riding where the driver is supposed to be. Alright, let's see if we can get any people looking at her funny. <laughs> well, this is exactly what comes to mind when you have a JDM van. Oh look, it's warning me to put on the passenger seat. <laughs> oh man. I've already had so many people just, you see them take the double load. Like, what the hell is that van? And then, now I got a dog sticking up the driver's side. It's hilarious. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say that she likes it. I mean, I like it more, I think. I've already had people just yell at me like, what is that? What kind of vehicle is that? And yet, now to have a dog sticking out. It's a good conversation start. <laughs> uh, I like being unique, that's for sure. It's definitely an affordable, reliable, unique option for a vehicle. Why be boring, right? Have that one-off vehicle. And I've still I've yet to see another one of these boxes. Um, I've never seen one in my life until I saw this one, and I, I hope I don't see another one. <laughs> There's similar Toyota vans in the city, bigger version, the Alphard, but um, I saw two of those in the city. But this has got its own unique style and a little bit smaller. So yeah, one-off might even be one of the only boxes in the city.